a cartoon chameleon adapting to the ever-changing landscape of children's television, powered by the world's greatest superheroes created from the cosmic legends of the universe with a three-part mission. To fight injustice, to right that which is wrong, and to serve all mankind. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the History of Super Friends. Thank you to 80stees.com for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description below and use code TOYGALAXY to get 30% off your order today. 80stees.com started off as the source for t-shirts inspired by all things pop culture from the 1980s, but there's more to the 80s than just the 80s. They've got shirts inspired by the 70s, the decade that paved the way for the 80s. They've got shirts inspired by the 90s, the decade that carried on the legacy of the 80s. They've got shirts inspired by the 2000s, because the 80s isn't just a decade, it's a state of mind. Whether your interests are laser focused on one thing, say movies, there's plenty of choices from Jaws to Shaun of the Dead. If your interests bounce around, they've got shirts from cartoons to video games, superheroes to music and wrestling. From Transformers to Dungeons and Dragons, Gollum to Ron Burgundy, Darkwing Duck to Powerpuff Girls, from Pong to Street Fighter 2. Their goal is to have something for everyone that loves retro pop culture. Whether your favorite cartoon is Gem and the Holograms or Robotech, or your favorite movie is The Karate Kid or Sixteen Candles, you'll find something you love. Click the link below and use code TOYGALAXY for 30% off your order today. Again, that's code TOYGALAXY for 30% off your order. Thanks again to 80stees.com. Super Friends is a Saturday morning cartoon produced by Hanna-Barbera, inspired by DC Comics superheroes that originally ran one season of 16 episodes from September to December of 1973, and was then rebooted, repackaged, or reimagined nearly every year from 1977 to 1985 for an additional 77 episodes, depending on how you count them. In the Great Hall of the Justice League, there are assembled the world's four greatest heroes, created from the cosmic legends of the universe. Superman, faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Wonder Woman, who can stop a bullet cold and make the axis fold. Aquaman, swift and powerful monarch of the ocean. And Batman, billionaire chauffeur to Robin, and also those three junior super friends, Wendy, Marvin, and Wonder Dog. Together they'll use their incredible powers to fight injustice in all its forms, to right that which is wrong at home, abroad, and in outer space, and to serve all mankind when government, religion, and law enforcement inevitably let you down. They're not just your friends, they're your super friends. In 1960, DC Comics published issue 28 of The Brave and the Bold, which introduced the world to the Justice League of America, a reboot of their 1940s super team, the Justice Society of America, with an updated modern roster of DC's most popular superheroes. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, The Flash, Green Lantern, and Martian Manhunter. And Snapper Carr, teen heartthrob and honorary member of the Justice League, acting as an avatar for the kids reading the comic. While Aquaman could speak Atlantean and Martian Manhunter could speak Martian, Snapper Carr could speak suburban slang. Daddy-o. Throughout the 1960s, DC comic book heroes were featured on television shows like Batman, starring Adam West and Burt Ward, animated series like The New Adventures of Superman, Aquaman, The Superman Aquaman Hour of Adventure, and The Batman Superman Hour, all produced by Filmation. This was amidst a plethora of other superhero cartoon offerings like Hanna-Barbera's Space Ghost and Dino Boy, Birdman and the Galaxy Trio, The Herculoids, Moby Dick and Mighty Mitor, and even Marvel Comics Fantastic Four and Spider-Man. Meanwhile, television as a communications and entertainment medium was approaching 95% saturation of homes throughout the U.S. Parents groups, health professionals, and behavioral specialists were very concerned about the potential negative effect television was having on the hearts and minds of young children. They said that superheroes, westerns, pretty much any television shows aimed at young children were delivering the message that violence solves problems. One advocacy group, the National Association for Better Radio and Television, or NAFBRAT, crystallized their concerns in a critique of Superman. They said that Superman is, quote, violent to those whom he thinks deserve it. He is permitted to commit violence under the pretense of imposing punishment. He is immortal and has powers beyond any physical, natural, or religious law. Clark Kent as Superman shows up at just the right time and the right place to fight for truth, justice, and the American way. There is no division between reality and fantasy. Crimes are solved because, and only because, a reporter can turn into a superhuman investigator. Murder, kidnapping, and other crimes make this an outstanding example of exploitation of children, serving them poison mental food to make sales and money." End quote. 
By the end of the 1960s, superheroes on television were temporarily defeated by those political action and advocacy groups. They had successfully changed the nature of superhero storytelling on television and the way it was produced and marketed. Someone actually thought about the children. But the Justice League was stronger than that. They had faced far worse situations and persevered. Naf Brat and the FCC were no match for Starro the Conqueror, Despero, or the evil wizards of Magic Land. When Hanna-Barbera acquired the rights to DC's most popular superheroes in 1973, they knew there was a formula that could still work for Saturday morning television. Partnering with the ABC television network, Hanna-Barbera brought in Alex Toth, creator of Space Ghost, and a lot of other highly influential works of modern television and literary art, to take his turn on the Justice League. With just a few politically imposed restrictions and some minor changes motivated by a decade of Hanna-Barbera's own demographic data. The new show was called Super Friends, a title that explicitly pivoted away from violence as a means to settle conflict, but maintain the sense of childlike awe at their otherworldly abilities. It repackaged the Justice League as partners in problem solving as opposed to the immortal arbiters of justice. They were, of course, still the Justice League and referred to themselves as such. Their base of operations was the Hall of Justice. Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Robin, and Aquaman made up the core heroes responding to local, national, and global threats. In 1973, Hanna-Barbera continued to capitalize on the breakout success of their original series, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? The biggest mystery Scooby and the gang solved was how to make a TV show for kids in a post-cartoon violence world. Failed by adults who can't see the problems, a group of kids used their adolescent agency to make sense of the scary adult world around them, solving problems with their minds, making friends, and facing their fears. Last but not least, put a funny dog on it, because kids like dogs. Super Friends debuted September 8th, 1973 on ABC and featured three junior members of the Justice League to sustain the proven Hanna-Barbera formula. Wendy, Marvin, and Wonder Dog. Like Snapper Carr before them, they were avatars for the kids watching the show. More relatable than Superman, more accessible than Aquaman, with powers equal to Batman and Robin, the junior leaguers could have easily crossed over with Scooby-Doo, Josie and the Pussycats, Speed Buggy, Langley and the Lighthouse Kids, Funky Phantom, Inch High, Private Eye, or Goober and the Ghost Chasers. But like most of Hanna-Barbera's shows using that formula, Super Friends only aired for a single season of 16 episodes through August of 1974, ceding its time slot to the next pop culture fad like martial arts and Hong Kong Fooey and Daredevil stunts with Devlin. It didn't take long, though, for superheroes to come back into style. By 1976, TV was brimming with new superhero representation. The Six Million Dollar Man was four seasons in and spinning off the Bionic Woman. Captain Marvel, sorry, Shazam was on Saturday mornings while Wonder Woman battled primetime. DC Comics, Hanna-Barbera, and ABC reignited the Justice League machine. It kicked off in 1976 with a Super Friends comic book published by DC and reruns of the original Super Friends series. While a new series was produced for September of 1977 called the all-new Super Friends Hour. The most significant change to the series was replacing junior leaguers Wendy, Marvin, and Wonder Dog with Donnie and Marie Osmond homages Zan and Jaina, the Wonder Twins. Zan, Jaina, and their space monkey Gleek fulfilled the role of audience avatars, funny animal sidekick, and more accessible superheroes, this time with actual superpowers. Hanna-Barbera expanded the roster of superheroes with guest appearances by Hawkman and Hawkgirl, The Atom, Green Lantern, and The Flash, and also introduced new heroes to shake up the heretofore all-white cast with heavy-handedly diverse characters Apache Chief, Black Vulcan, and Samurai. By the time the 16th and final episode aired in December, these super friends were a hit. Slightly more mature adventures and storytelling had kids and teens tuning in for the new adventures of the new Justice League. The only place to see all their favorite DC heroes teaming up in a single show. Holy icicles! In their daily pursuit of justice, our superhero characters do battle with the world's most evil villains. Where will the next evil villain come from? Maybe you will create them in Post Superheroes Create a Villain Contest. Grand prize. Nine kids win a one-week trip to Hollywood. They'll have breakfast with these superheroes. And the villain they've created. Second prize. One thousand win bicycles. Millions will enter and everyone who does gets superheroes puppy stickers. Details on specially marked boxes of Alphabet, Super Sugar Crisp, Honeycomb, and Pebble Cereal. You can draw and paint your villain in the picture provided. Three different pictures. Superman! Wonder Woman! Batman and Robin! Three grand prizes per picture. The most original villains win. <laughs> Holy Hollywood! Post Superheroes Create a Villain Contest. Details on specially marked boxes of Alphabet, Super Sugar Crisp, Honeycomb, and Pebble Cereal. 
The success of the all-new Super Friends Hour spurred Hanna-Barbera and ABC to do the same thing the following year. Make some changes, age it up a bit, keep capitalizing on the popularity of superheroes. The 1978 version was Challenge of the Super Friends, Super Friends, now all one word. The 16 episodes were broken into two very different segments. The first half of each episode was a Super Friends episode that continued the style and presentation of the previous season, including the Wonder Twins and Gleek, while the second segment in every episode pitted the Justice League against their greatest villains from the comics, joined together as the Legion of Doom. The split between the two segments within the series has been confused over the years as two different shows altogether, and good luck when it comes to season numbering as the second segments tend to be referred to as season four of Super Friends. Challenge of the Super Friends aired its 16th and final episode in December of 1978, right around the time that the live-action Superman movie was hitting theaters on its way to making $300 million and becoming a pop culture milestone. Superheroes were hot and Superman was leading the way. So in 1979, Hanna-Barbera and ABC did it again, this time taking a narrative step backward, aging down a little, and using the Super Friends team that included the Wonder Twins and Gleek the Space Monkey to adventure through tales of folklore and literature. The Justice League find themselves in episodes inspired by The Wizard of Oz, Camelot for Another, Lord of the Rings, Frankenstein, and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Or technically 20,001. Only eight new episodes were produced for this season, with the rest of the time filled by reruns of episodes from the prior two seasons, but the heroes also showed up in a pair of live-action specials that aired in primetime for the adult audience. In January of 1979, NBC aired the Hanna-Barbera-produced Legends of the Superheroes, essentially a live-action version of Super Friends that brought all of, most of, the heroes together in a single episode for the first time and bordered on parody, if that's possible. Adam West and Burt Ward returned to headline the special as Batman and Robin, Garrett Craig was Shazam, sorry, Captain Marvel, Hawkman, Black Canary, The Flash, and Huntress all made their live-action television debuts opposite a pseudo-Legion of Doom. Key characters like Superman and Wonder Woman were noticeably absent, unable to appear due to licensing conflicts tying them to their own series and or movie franchises. But that's okay, because the second Legends of the Superheroes special was a roast emceed by Ed McMahon, and the less we talk about that, the better. Introducing, ladies and gentlemen, Ghetto Man. <laughs> The Super Friends were back in 1980 as Super Friends, two words, no hyphen, in a format that they would reuse for the next three seasons of 22 total episodes through 1983, supplemented by reruns from the previous seasons. The roster was once again represented by the familiar core heroes Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Robin Aquaman, joined once again by the Wonder Twins and Gleek, occasional guest stars, and another new hero, this time from Mexico, named El Dorado. For the 1983-1984 season, Super Friends went on vacation. Technically, the series was canceled as their previously produced episodes were packaged together and sold to networks for daily syndication. However, they continued to be featured in new episodes produced by Hanna-Barbera and ABC, but not aired in the U.S. All 24 of those episodes, referred to as the Lost Episodes, were not viewable in the U.S. until a decade later in 1995, when USA Network included them in their Superman Batman Adventures series. After passing on a potential Teen Titans cartoon in 1983 to air alongside Super Friends, ABC brought Super Friends back again in 1984, this time as Super Friends, the legendary superpowers show. The new title tying it to a new line of action figures being produced by Kenner. Kenner, still engorged with Star Wars money from their revolutionary series of action figures, vehicles, and playsets, was hoping to develop a similar juggernaut based on what continued to be some of the most popular superheroes in the world. Like Star Wars, the figure line was built to include a variety of vehicles and playsets. Unlike Star Wars, Kenner's superpowers each featured a special engineering gimmick or superpower play feature when the character's arms or legs were squeezed together, like Superman's power punch, Aquaman's kick, Wonder Woman's deflector bracelets, or Hawkman's flappy wings. Eight episodes aired from September to October of 1984. The roster this time included core favorites, Superman, Batman, and Robin, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Apache Chief, Black Vulcan, Samurai, El Dorado, the Wonder Twins, and new superhero sensation Firestorm. Despite being featured in the opening title sequence, Aquaman and The Flash didn't actually appear in the series. Instead of the Legion of Doom, the Super Friends face off against Darkseid and his minions in their television debut, although villains like Lex Luthor, Brainiac, and Mr. Mixie's Pitlick show up as well, the last new episode aired in August of 1985. The final eight-episode season of Super Friends, the Superpowers team Galactic Guardians ran from September to October of 1985, bringing back the same team of heroes as the previous season's Sans Wonder Twins, now referred to as the Superpowers team instead of the Justice League. 
If nothing else, it helped maintain awareness of Kenner's Superpowers line of action figures on store shelves and allowed for the inclusion of characters that would have previously been considered too obscure for a toy line. Dr. Fate, Red Tornado, heck, Desaad, Calabac, and Mantis. Kids weren't asking for these guys, but they looked cool on the pegs. The Superpowers team, Galactic Guardians, was the end of the road for the Super Friends. 93 episodes over 12 years with just a few little breaks here and there. The Kenner toy line managed to make it to first quarter 1986 before ending as well. Any show that lasts as long as Super Friends is going to see a lot of turnover in the cast. That said, many of the voice actors were surprisingly consistent over the 12-year run, and some even played the same characters dating back to the 1960s filmation series. Danny Dark played Superman, Casey Kasem was Robin, Olin Sewell, who had been Batman since the filmation era, passed the cowl back to Adam West for the 84 and 85 series. Ernie Hudson played Cyborg, Rene Abergenois was Desaad, Peter Collins showed up for an episode as Felix Faust, and of course, Frank Welker as Marvin Wonder Dog, Mr. Mixie's Pitlick, Calabac, Darkseid, and others. Super Friends returned to the comics that inspired them, first in the mid-70s with a limited collector's edition reprinting two earlier Justice League stories, then an ongoing series that ran 47 issues from 1976 to 1981. It helped develop some of the characters unique to the show, like Zan and Jaina, and even introduced characters that would find their way into the larger DC universe. Those 47 issues were collected together in 2001 with a fancy Alex Toth tribute cover by Alex Ross. The question is, is it canon? No. But also yes, because DC is a multiverse, and that's Comics Business 101, baby. Hello. It's Mantech. It's always Mantech. Whatever version of Super Friends you prefer, every episode has been released on DVD as of 2013. Amazon has every episode for purchase, streaming under the single name Super Friends, with each series lined up as a new season. Super Friends, like the DC comics that inspired them, were owned by Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers packaged episodes together in syndication blocks over the years, including to Cartoon Network in 1996, after Time Warner and Turner Broadcasting were united by merger. The DC Animated Universe that kicked off in 1992 with Batman the Animated Series led to a Justice League series in 2001 that no one would mistake for Super Friends. But the name didn't disappear forever. From 2008 to 2010, DC Comics published DC Super Friends based on the wildly popular Imaginext toy line from Mattel. In 2010, an original video animation called Joker's Playhouse was released under the same DC Super Friends name and includes homages to both the original Super Friends series and Challenge of the Super Friends. The Imaginext DC Super Friends line continued through 2013 and again in 2015, supported by new episodes released on video and online. As of this video, DC Super Friends is still an active part of Mattel's Imaginext. For over a decade, Super Friends brought DC's most popular heroes to an audience larger than the comics could ever hope to reach. It re-established classic heroes like Superman, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman as household names alongside the more familiar Batman and Robin. Born from a time when the world was demanding justice, but children's health advocates were demanding cooperation. The world's finest superheroes were brought together to show kids a better way to solve their problems, to make the world a better place, and dream about adventures with some very super friends. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, if you would like early access to the videos ad-free as well as behind the scenes features, sneak peeks at upcoming projects, and exclusive monthly podcast about the show, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. And let us know in the comments down below if you watched Super Friends at any point between 1973 and today. I definitely watched it as a kid, although I have no specific memories of it, probably just the reruns that aired through the late 70s and early 80s. I love the DC superheroes, but it just wasn't appointment viewing for me, like Muppet Babies, Shirt Tales, and Alvin and the Chipmunks. Every generation has its heroes. They were mine. <laughs> That's me saluting Alvin. <laughs>